What drew me to the part of High Evolutionary was James Gunn surprising me by offering me the role while we were filming the opening and dance sequence of uh, um, Peacemaker. Um, and so as, as soon as he did that, I was always going to say yes, because I love him as an artist and a collaborator, and it seemed like a great challenge. What makes the High Evolutionary an effective villain is, I think, the fact that we don't shy away from the fact that he actually is a villain, the clues in the title. You know, um, sometimes we're so eager in movies to kind of find the villain sympathetic that we veer away from the fact that these are bad people. You know, these are people uh, doing some pretty horrendous stuff and this guy does some seriously horrendous stuff. So I think he's very effective because it, reminds people about the cruelty that uh, we're capable of, the cruelty towards those that are more defenseless than we are, reminding us of that, reminding us of the necessity uh, to, to keep a watch out for these sort of people. And I embrace that fully. It's fun to play as a villain. Um, and so I think he's effective because we're, find, we're actually seeing someone in this movie who is not likable. And I loved it as a challenge because I was like, can I still play that truthfully? Can I truly be unlikable, embrace that, and still have some level of maybe comprehension as to why I'm doing what I'm doing? And that's the real challenge. You don't have to like me, but do you understand why I'm doing it? And that's very fun to play. Tell us about working with the Guardians cast. What stood out to you about them? Working with the Guardians cast it was quite extraordinary because they were all such warm people. These are superstars that I was watching on my IMAX, you know, giant, you know, personalities and talents. And it's very unique to work with a group of people who are so well-known, so successful, but also so down to earth. And I think James really surrounds himself with people that are very much down to earth. So coming into such a big job, it didn't feel like such a big job because they were so welcoming. I didn't feel any pressure. The only pressure I felt was the pressure I gave myself to justify James's choice in me, you know. Tell us about your costume. Does it evoke with the character? My costume describing it is that it's so regal. It's a regal purple. It it it's it's it it really evokes the nature of the character and the sort of essence of the character as someone who glides through a space and is noticed and sort of is above it all. And the work that uh, Judiana Makovsky and uh, Legacy and everyone that put, you know, work into making the costume work for me also. Like they were like, are you comfortable with this? Is it too heavy? How do we make it look good? You know, does it look slick enough? Right down to the elegance of it. And I think they sort of really molded it around what I was doing and it really helped but I came into it and the first day I was there and they put that costume on me I was like oh okay now I really get this guy it was the, it was really the final piece in how at least I was going to approach the character and that came through such detailed and a lot of work I mean they sent it back and forth they kept tweaking it right to the end of the shoot to get it perfect so the dedic when you have that sort of dedication you also re um, you sort of repay that dedication as an artist too did the practical sets and attention to detail help to inform your acting? The practicality of the sets, the fact that I was seeing in front of me what I my character was supposed to be seeing really helped my performance because I didn't have to do as much imagination with CGI or looking at a green screen. It was tactic, you know, very tactile and actually there. Beth Mickle, who designed the set, did such a great job with that. So I was able to get a sense of the grandeur of this guy's world, um, especially his uh, lair, as it were, this raised desk and everything, and to look down on everyone. And for an actor, that's very helpful because you, you, one of the things we forget to do is actually see, you know, we were so stressed about the performance. We don't actually look around our surroundings sometimes on stage. So it's wonderful to come and actually see everything I'm gonna be using and my domain. It added to the psychology of the character. You've worked with James Gunn before. How is this collaboration different and what does he bring to the film from your perspective? I've worked with James Gunn now twice and this collaboration reminded me very much of, at least our, our personal collaboration was very much like Peacemaker. He has this way of <clears throat> giving you so much material on the page to use and then sitting back and seeing what you do with it. 
And then if you give him something really interesting, <clears throat> he really wants to push you further with it, you know? Um, he doesn't let you off the hook. And he also wants you to keep things grounded. It doesn't matter how extreme the character is. Keep it grounded. Is it is it truthful? You know, it's not enough to be interesting. You know, you have to be interesting and truthful. And that's probably the actor in him. And But that's definitely the writer in him that drives with character. So, um, it, 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 again, he demanded in his own way that you 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 be truthful to the role, you know, and have fun doing it, which is really, really a big part of working with James, you know. This is your first time on the Marvel Studios production. What impressed you most about their process? This is my first Marvel movie. And what I found most impressive was how, certainly in this uh, uh, situation, how despite being this massive mammoth organization, how when it came down to making the movie, it was James's domain and his crew's domain and his team's domain. And a sense that this is your story, go tell it and we'll give you the support you need. And so I felt very much like, although it was the world was telling me this is a massive thing you're stepping into, there was something kind of domestic about it in the sense that when the bell rang and we got to work, we just got to work. You know, there was no external noise. We were able to create this this story, you know, and I really enjoyed the intimacy that it that actually existed there. What can audiences look forward to when they see this film? Audiences can look forward to a lot of the very things they've always loved the Guardians about. If you love the laughter, the camaraderie, the joy, the humanity, you're going to get that, but you're going to get it tenfold. This is the third act of their lives and in, in life in general. The third act is always informed by the fact that we've lived life, that we've had loss, we've had joy, we've had death, we've had happiness, we've had sadness. So all of that comes into it. So we're still seeing our guardians, characters we love, but they're living things a bit more deeply, you know, um, in this chapter. And of course, you have the fact that, you know, welcome the high evolutionary. So I think that's that's going to add some spice to it. <laughs>